Hi, I'm Jess Burke, Director of Marketing and Communications for the International Society for Heart and Lung Transplantation, and I am excited today to be interviewing Maz Korsandi, who is the recipient of the 2022 edition of the prestigious O.H. Fraser Award in MCS Translational Re Research. Uh, hi, Dr. Korsandi. How are you today? Hi, Jess. I'm fine. Thank you very much, and uh, very pleased to meet you, and um, also very honored to have uh, have the privilege of receiving this uh, uh, extremely prestigious award. Thank well, congratulations, and thanks for taking some time to talk about it with me and with our members and listeners today. Um, so maybe for our first question, before we dive into the project, maybe you can tell me a little bit about yourself, um, who you are, where you work, and, and what you do. Thank you for the kind introduction, Jess. Uh, my name is Mas Sandy. I'm an attending cardiac surgeon and assistant professor of surgery here at the University of Washington Medical Center. My interest in medicine started as a uh, young child. As my father was a physician and I looked up to him very much. And at the age of uh, 17, I moved across to the United Kingdom uh, to undertake my high school and medical school education. Uh, Following completion of that, uh, I undertook my basic surgical training as well as my uh, higher specialty training uh, and residency in that country. Um, and following completion of that, I moved across to the United States and undertook my subspecialty fellowship training at Duke University Medical Center, uh, where I saw um, heart, lung, heart and lung transplantation as well as mechanical circulatory support. Uh, after completion of my fellowship training, I was appointed here at the University of Washington Medical Center, uh, where it's been a, a, a fantastic experience uh, for me. And uh, my uh, main remit of practice includes uh, all spectrum of adult cardiac surgery, including uh, valve repair replacement, as well as coronary artery bypass grafting surgeries. Uh, however, my main focus of practice is uh, heart transplantation and mechanical circuitry support. Um, the project that uh, you won the grant for explores using the CardioMEMS system data to manage durable LVADs, and it sounds like you'll be looking at developing a closed loop LVAD controller. So tell us a little bit about how this idea for a project, you know, it came about. Where did, where did this come from? When I started at the University of Washington, um, I thought about a research project and um, seeing our LVAD patients uh, who uh, require uh, multiple hospital readmissions and um, due to primarily due to volume overload and require uh, inpatient hospital stay as well as uh, multiple invasive uh, investigations such as right heart cats. I thought about it implementing the use of cardiomems uh, in our routine clinical practice in this cohort of patients uh, in order to improve the patient's quality of life so that uh, they don't have to be admitted to the clinic or the inpatient service as frequently and avoiding uh, using um, frequent uh, invasive investigations such as right heart cats. So once you developed the idea, obviously you started developing the study. Can you go into some more depth about um, what you'll be exploring uh, and some of the methods and protocols of the study? So we will be prospectively uh, recruiting patients who have uh, HeartMate 3 LVADs and CardioMEMS device. And uh, we will be performing baseline investigations such as a right heart caths and, uh, and an echocardiogram. Uh, <clears throat> and there we'll be looking at various parameters such as aortic valve opening and um, and the position of the intraventricular septum. We will then um, place these patients on a, um, on a recumbent bike uh, where we would uh, exercise uh, these patients uh, and alter the uh, VAT speed accordingly to see if um, that would uh, lead to an improvement in their exercise tolerance. Um, we think that this data would form a baseline of um, how we could modulate VAT speeds in the future. 
to improve the patient's exercise tolerance and also quality of life. And we are also gonna be seeing how this would correlate with their uh, cardiomens readings, which the patient will be submitting to us on a daily basis. You mentioned it a little bit at the start when you talked about where the idea came from, but what are some of the additional potentials for the study for patient care in the future? Um, obviously, we're talking about reducing stress on the patient and visits to the hospital, but you know, what, maybe in more specifics, what, how do you see patient care improving based on potential findings here? So we will be uh, trying to uh, implement the findings of this study in order to improve the patient's quality of life by helping them stay at home as long as possible uh, and managing their uh, medications uh, from afar rather than having to admit the patients to the clinic or to the hospital for multiple uh, inv invasive investigations and diuretic therapy. Uh, the ultimate goal would be to see if uh, we could uh, come up with a strategy uh, where um, we could implement at the optimum bat speed for these patients. Uh, and even more, if a, a closed loop communication could be implemented between the CardioMEMS device and the bat. That sounds like a great outcome. Um, are there plans during the process of your study um, for collaboration with any other institutions? We are very excited to collaborate with our colleagues at University of Nebraska Medical Center uh, who have a shared interest in this project uh, and uh, aim to produce a, a prospective multi-centric study uh, to be able to further uh, validate uh, the use of cardiomems in our bad patients. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the team you'll be working with, maybe some people that, that are, you're collaborating with that you'd like to kind of shout out here, um, or anything else you'd like to share about the study? This is a um, multidisciplinary study, and there will be a team of us uh, collaborating uh, during the entire period to be able to execute the study in the most time efficient way. Uh, I am the primary investigator of uh, this study. Uh, there will be other team members, including my colleague, Dr. Jay Powell, as well as two of our uh, senior residents and a very experienced research nurse who will be assisting us. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes and congratulations again on, on the grant and, and thank you for joining me. And as always, you know, we really can't wait to see your findings. So Hope you'll <laughs> submit them to an upcoming ISHLT meeting if they're as exciting and promising as you hope. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll we'll ask people to kind of keep an eye on on the outcome of this. Thank you very much.